So moving forward with this project of adding capacitors to replace this battery, I wanted to check and see how much voltage ripple there is on the car as it currently sits. I understand that the battery will provide a load to the alternator so that that way it will actually be able to give out a smoother voltage. Um, what I don't know is how much ripple the OEM car has. So what I'm going to do is first charge up the battery with just a cheap battery charger. And then I'm going to start up the car and measure the voltage waveform that the alternator is putting out to see how much ripple it has. That way when I add the capacitor banks, if they don't put on as much of a load as the battery when they're charged, I'll be able to see if it's causing the alternator to create excess ripple. I honestly have no idea the capacitors might work considerably better than the battery at getting rid of that, or they could be worse. So the plan is to basically hook up the probes on this from the oscilloscope to the battery. Once the battery is charged, I'll start it up, get a single shot of an AC couple to see how much ripple I get while the alternator is running. Once I put in the capacitor bank, I'll do the same thing. If the ripple is less than what it is with the battery, I have nothing to worry about. If it's greater than that, I have to see how much greater it is and if it's going to cause problems for the electronics in the vehicle. An interesting thing what's showing up on the oscilloscope right here, a friend of mine and I were measuring some pressure transducers on a vehicle and we found out that cheap battery chargers will produce an incredible amount of noise. This is AC coupled with 100 millivolt divisions and this is what the battery charger will actually cause. I'll take the measurements, take some screenshots, and show you what I find. Thanks for watching. The information I'm going to get, I'm going to obtain by DC coupling my scope and setting a trigger level slightly above what the battery voltage is, but under what the alternator charge voltage is, and setting it up to take a single shot measurement. So the car will start, the voltage will drop, and then the voltage should come up and it should capture what voltage it's charging at. And there you can see that we've captured the waveform and it shows the voltage before I turned the ignition on, while it was on, while it was starting, and then what the car is charging at. In part of this, we want to get the AC ripple off of the alternator while it's running. So we switched to being AC coupled. We're going to start the car and see if I can pick up the signal and trigger on it correctly.
With the capacitors temporarily installed, we're going to take the same reading at the same point with the oscilloscope so that we can compare the voltage ripple. The first reading that I'm going to take, I've got my trigger level set the same as before, and we have the same ones, we're going to set it to the same one second divisions. And it's set on the rising edge of 13.8 volts, just like before. So, right now the voltage is actually higher, it's a little over 15, so I can get it to start with the bank of capacitors. But it's going to dip down as it starts, hopefully it'll fire up, and we should be able to capture the same waveform that we had before. You can see that we've captured the same waveform on startup that we did earlier. I'm going to take the same second measurement with the capacitors installed by AC coupling the scope, starting the car, and trying to effectively trigger on the signal so we can see if we're getting more or less voltage ripple with the capacitors and the battery. Okay, so this is the screen capture from when I was DC coupled and I triggered at the 13.8 volts on the rising edge. And what we see here is this is the battery voltage sitting before I turn on the ignition. When I turn on the ignition, the running lights and the computers and everything turn on so it puts a slight load on the battery so you can see the voltage comes down a little. Right here is where I actually have the inrush current from when the starter first starts to turn it has the highest draw of power. This was during the cranking process the voltage starts coming back. It starts and this is actually the alternator kicking on. And you can see that relatively quickly I'm at one second divisions here so in a tenth of a second or so we can see that the alternator picks up and holds out at its steady voltage which is a little over 14 volts. Now the important thing here is that this alternator coming up like this immediately and then holding a steady voltage is because I had a fully charged battery before I was starting this. If the battery was heavily discharged it's possible for this to take a long time if it's fully loading the alternator for the voltage curve to come up. Now let's compare this to the DC coupling when we put the capacitors in there instead of the battery. Again what we have here is a steady voltage that we're getting from the capacitor bank. When we turn on the key we get a slight drop and this again is going to be from the load that we're getting from just the running lights and the computers turning on. This is during the cranking process the voltage gets pulled down 
and when it starts you can see that the alternator is immediately fully loaded and it slowly brings up the voltage until the capacitor bank is fully charged. Now you have to be a little bit careful because when I say slowly you have to remember that these measurements each one of these lines is a one second division so you're literally talking about three seconds that it's fully loaded. I've heard some people say that using capacitors and replacing batteries will destroy your alternator because it loads it so heavily. I tend to think that that's probably completely false because a three second load on your alternator when it starts or even if the capacitors were almost to the bottom of where they would barely start the car you're talking about well under a minute of fully loading the alternator um, and if you have a discharged battery it can be fully loaded for 5, 10, 15 minutes as it tries to recharge a discharged battery. I would think that you would actually have a better chance with a weak battery of damaging an alternator than you ever would with putting these in the system. The important thing here that I was looking for originally is how much ripple we have in this and you could see that the ripple and we get all this noise on the line and the easier way to measure that was with our AC coupling measurements that I took with it running. This was with the battery in the car and measuring it right at the battery terminals. So this is at a 50 millivolt division on our vertical scale and you can see that I put the lines in here so our maximum points is about 94 millivolts and negative 108 millivolt area and that's the AC ripple and you're going to have that with any alternator to some degree. Now when we do it with the capacitors you can see here I'm actually at a hundred millivolt scale and I didn't bother trying to put in the lines and take measurements off this because after I finished this it occurred to me that I had some long wire leads and my connections were not that good from my capacitor to the point on the battery that I was measuring so I'm not going to be too concerned about this increased AC ripple until I actually get the correct size capacitors in there and measure them with good leads on there because I might have been just picking up excess noise um, from the ignition system, the ignition modules relatively close to where all those capacitors were sitting. So this is what I'm finding for how the AC ripple and how the voltage changes during the starting process between the battery and the supercapacitors. Hopefully you found this interesting. If you found any errors in anything I said, please let me know. And thanks for watching.